thank you for being here today. My name is Joe Montoya, J-O-E-M-O-N-T-O-Y-A. I'm the Division Chief of Investigations for the Denver Police Department. I want to start with uh, listing uh, some of the, the people in attendance today, and then we'll go through a series of speakers to kind of break down why we're here. Uh, we have Executive Director of Safety, Murphy Robinson, uh, Chief of Police, Paul Payson, Chief of the Denver Fire Department, Todd Bauer. We have uh, Acting ASAC of ATF, Mr. Pete Marini. Have Dr. Carol Watkins. Uh, she's the Executive Director of the Muslim Family Services of Colorado. And uh, in my commentary, I'll get into what, uh, what they have done for us and to, to assist with this. We are expecting uh, Papa Dia. Um, he's the African uh, leadership. Uh, he's with the African leadership, and he's the uh, chosen uh, speaker uh, for the family and for the Senegalese community. And we're also expecting uh, Council General from the Republican of Senegal. Uh, to be with us today. And we also have Officer Simeon Koto. Uh, also, I will touch on what his uh, participation is with this investigation. And then we have our investigative team in the back that is uh, at the forefront of this, of this investigation. So with that being said, I'm gonna hand the mic over to uh, Executive Director of Safety, Murphy Robinson. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow. <laughs> On behalf of Mayor Michael B. Hancock and the Department of Safety, I want to uh, thank you all for being here to discuss this tragic case uh, and how you can help us with this investigation. I want to acknowledge uh, the partnership that is being experienced. Although tragic, um, I believe that the partnership between our agencies and uh, the federal government, uh, both police, fire, the ATF, and everyone that's been a part of this really highlights why the Public Safety Department is so effective and really highlights how we can bring the people that did this to justice. Thanks to the Senegalese President, uh, President Saul, for sending his thoughts and prayers to the family and the Denver community. And foremost, I want to extend my condolences to the, the Diol family and the Senegalese community. I can't imagine the pain that you're feeling from such a tragic and violent loss. But I want you to know that the Denver family is with you. I want you to know that we're gonna work hard to find out who committed this violent act. But we need your help. And we want our Denver community to also come together in partnership. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Chief Montoya uh, to discuss the details about how you can help us bring to whoever is responsible for this to justice. And I uh, want to uh, extend my apologies to Mr. Mike Mills, the president of Crime Stoppers, who is uh, the primary reason we're here today. So uh, I obviously look to the left more than I look to the right. So I apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to quickly touch on, on the, the crime. Uh, I ask that we hold questions till the end. I will return to the podium if you have any questions about that. Uh, we responded uh, the early, early morning on Wednesday to assist the fire department with a fire. At that time, that, that was the reason for our response. Uh, quickly determined that there was uh, individuals that perished in the fire. Uh, to the count of five, uh, as far as we could tell that day, was three adults and two children. Because early on in the uh, investigation, we determined that this uh, fire was intentionally set. It was then uh, converted into a homicide investigation. First and foremost, I want to thank the, the community, the Senegalese community, for their support at the scene. They showed up in mass, and they were there, and they were an integral part of helping the immediate family members through that process, because it was very difficult. And they've been by their sides ever since. I want to thank our, our support in the investigation. Uh, fire from the, from the front end has been there by our sides, and we quickly uh, uh, turned to the ATF for their assistance, because one of the responsibilities, federal responsibilities, ATF is is arson investigation. So, they they brought their expertise and resources to help us immediately, and they've been uh, very valuable in helping us uh, uh, quickly 
determine what what potentially might have happened there and helping us uh, gather as much evidence as possible. We and and then our our partners, our friends, Crime Stoppers, who are always there for us, right on the front end of these things. They help us with monetary support. They help us uh, get this this information out, and they help us retrieve the information that comes back as a result. I want to say um, there is a, a substantial monetary uh, reward in this, and part of it is is through Crime Stoppers, and part of it is through the financial assistance or the the contributions from the ATF as well. Uh, puts us at an amount of uh, fourteen thousand uh, dollars on this Crime Stoppers reward. I want to say that there could be additional uh, additions to this Crime Stoppers bulletin as uh, we develop information that can be crucial in solving this crime. We, when we feel it's appropriate to share with the community, we will be pushing it out in connection with this original Crime Stoppers bulletin, as well as any additional monetary uh, donations that go towards the reward from the community. We will continue to add to that as they come in. Beyond the money, what I'm asking for is a heartfelt plea. I'm, I'm, I want people to look into their hearts. I want them to see the picture of this family and understand that this was a family that was thriving. They were headed the right direction. Uh, this, this uh, Mr. Diol, I, I believe they, they called him Jibby, was his name to his friends and family. He was doing all the things he needed to do to provide his family with, with an amazing life in, in America. And that was all cut short on that day. So I ask if you have any information on, on this crime, we ask that you look into your hearts and do the right thing. Do it for the right reasons. Because we need to find these individuals or individual, and we have to be able to hold them accountable for what they did on that day. We owe this to that family. We owe this to the Senegalese community and we own it to the country of Senegal. So with that said, um, I'm gonna hand it over to the president of Crime Stoppers, Mr. Mike Mills. Thank you all for including me today. Um, my family would like to share our condolences and prayers with the entire Jewel family and their many friends here and in Senegal. I would also like to thank the Denver Police Department, Denver Fire Department, the ATF, the dedicated professionals of detectives for their hard work, their commitment and partnership over the years with Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. On behalf of the entire board of directors of Metro Denver Crime Stoppers, we are increasing our reward of up to t from up to $2,000 to up to $4,000 for information leading to an arrest of the person or persons who committed these heinous crimes against the Joel family and against our community. Every crime that we're involved with tugs at my heartstrings and has for over the last 25 years. But when I woke up the other morning to the news of this, and we started talking to our coordinator and to the detectives. It was the least we could do. Um, so I please, I urge you, if you have any information on this crime, remain anonymous, call Crime Stoppers, and earn a reward of up to $4,000. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Next, we're going to have um, Officer Simeon Cotto come up to the, the microphone. Officer Cotto is fluent in French. On the, uh, the day of, of the crime, we quickly discovered that many of the people involved that might have some pertinent information only spoke French. Officer Cotto uh, volunteered to come out and he assisted with that. What we're gonna do now is because we want this message to get out to our entire community, we're gonna ask him to come and read the, sh the, the short uh, narrative from the Crime Stoppers Bulletin in French. Thank you, Chief. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi. Uh, le 5 août 2020, uh, Jibril et Aja Dior ont perdu leur vie dans leur maison. 
Leur petite fille de trois ans a aussi perdu sa vie. Ils ont tous été tués dans le feu. Avec Hassan Dior et sa fille, une petite fille de trois ans qu'on appelle Awa Beye. Le feu a été activé dans la 53e rue nord Truckee, la rue de Denver, dans les environs de 2h30 du matin. L'incendie, il semble que l'incendie a été intentionnellement activé par des inconnus. Et ces inconnus ont fui les environs de la maison après avoir activé le feu. Euh, le, la, le département de police de Denver, avec le métro Denver Crime Stopper, aura une récompense de 14 000 dollars à toute personne qui pourra nous aider à résoudre ce, 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 ce crime. Merci. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for having us. We want to start by thanking the Denver police for working tirelessly since uh, this horrific crime took place to be by our side and to support us. We have here the Consul General of Senegal that flew in from New York. We also have Jibril young brother. His name is Musa. He also would like to say a few words. And as a leader in the African community, uh, we are not used to see something like this take place. And uh, we consider ourselves part of this society, part of this great nation we call home. And uh, this is a time where we don't want to feel alone. This is a time we want the US-born citizen to embrace us and wrap us around their arm because our hearts, our soul has been shattered. The only thing that can give us peace is to be able to identify the individual that did this horrific crime and brought them to justice. And we are asking not only the Denver police, not only the city official, but we are asking every resident of Denver, every resident of the state of Colorado to help us solve this crime. Any information that you have, even if you think it's not valuable, we would like for you to come forward and share it with us. This is not only depending on Gabriel family, but this is depending on the entire immigrant community, not only African. So helping us solve this crime will help every immigrant living in this great state of Colorado to feel at peace and feel secure. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to uh, introduce the Council General of the Republic of Senegal, Haji Nadiao. Come up. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Greetings, good afternoon. I uh, would like to, on behalf of the government of Senegal, express our gratitude to the uh, Denver police. What you've shown so far is very encouraging. We appreciate it. We see all the efforts that have been done since yesterday. Uh, Inspector, uh, Detective, uh, Baker had come and kindly met with the, uh, with the family and uh, had uh, shared with us some uh, assuring words. All we are uh, asking for and that you are concerned about is for uh, justice to be served, for whoever did this to be found and to be brought to justice for the sake of peace and security in, in this great city of Denver, but also for the sake of um, comfort 
to its uh, citizens, including uh, Senegalese nationals. I am, again, grateful for all you have done thus far and look forward to what you are, you'll be doing in the future to uh, bring this to a closure. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to uh, call up the brother of uh, Jibril, um, Musa, to come up and say a couple words. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm the youngest brothers, who, those people who lost their lives. That was my family, my everything. It's hard to really talk to right now because still heartbroken and so emotional right now, but it hurts. It hurts a lot just to wake up and lose your family like that. Nobody doesn't deserve this. Nobody. No family didn't deserve this. You're going to miss them a lot, a lot. All we want right now is y'all officers, we just want y'all justice. We just want y'all justice. Y'all can do all your power you call to just help this resolve, because this just hurt a lot, you know, losing your family, all your family in one time. But we just want justice. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I, want, I want the family, the local community of Senegal, and the country Senegal to know you have our full commitment and devotion to this case. We're going to do everything in our power. We're going to rely heavily on the community to assist us. And we have every hope that we are going to find the individual or individuals responsible for this and bring them to justice. So that concludes the official portion of uh, the Crime Stoppers presentation, and now I'll, uh, I'll answer any questions you might have. Chief, in the crime alert, you say it is, there, it's mentioned that a car was seen fleeing from the scene. What can you tell us about that? At this time, we don't want to discuss that um, because uh, we, we, don't want to, we don't want individuals to get rid of evidence or destroy the car or, or hide, hard, hide the car. Um, so we didn't want to disclose any more inf information on that. It'll just, uh, it it'll hurt the case at this point. Can, what makes it, do you think, arson in this case? What did you find it to see that makes it a fire that you believe was deliberately set? Well, I can't get, again, I can't get into the detail. Uh, we're relying on the expertise of uh, the Denver Fire arson investigators, the ATF, and uh, some of the evidence collected at the scene, but I can't say much more than that right now. Not right at this time. We don't want to get tunnel visioned into a motive. Um, there are some cases on the front end, it's very uh, evident as to what the motive was for a crime. This is not one of those cases. So we have to go into it uh, very open-minded and look at every possible angle. And if, uh, if at some point we determine it was hate motivated or bias motivated, then we will definitely share that with the community. <coughs> Um, again, I don't want to get too much detail. We did have an arson dog on scene. Um, I think they were effective with the investigation, and I won't say anything more about that. Heard from a neighbor that the fire may have started in the living room. Can you say anything about that? No, we cannot. Can you say how many uh, individuals or, or suspects the department's looking for? Is it just one person? Uh, I can't discuss that at this point.
it, we're investigating it as a homicide, so that, that means that uh, we believe it was intentionally set. Yes. We, we do not know that. We absolutely do not know that. That's, that's not even something that I don't want to share. We just do not know at this point. Have you questioned anyone so far in connection with this fire? No, other than the uh, immediate, uh, the, the family members that were in the home at the time were the only ones that we have spoke to about that. Were there any point. cameras in the neighborhood that might have caught the vehicle that you're looking for? There were, there were several cameras in the area, and they were still examining that evidence, and uh, in, uh, Hopefully, it'll produce some information that'll be help us uh, solve this crime. Chief, can you put this into historical perspective? When was the last time the Denver Police Department helped Denver Fire with this many casualties and people who died? Well, the only one that comes to mind to me was uh, probably around 2012, 2013 at Faro's up on uh, Colorado Boulevard. But that that was more of an arson to cover up a homicide. Uh, the individuals had been executed inside and then the building was set on fire. And that's the only one that comes to mind. Uh, so I wasn't really prepared to answer that historically, but I only know about that one because I was there. Thank you. Good. Thank you.